Welcome to TradeTheMBI.com. This is John. This report is for, well, All Saints Day, the 1st of November, holiday here in Italy. Well, looking at the ES, we had a nice little bounce off of uh, the ES right here at that 4169 line that we had and strongly bought. We can see that on the MBI reading, the red is leading, so this is going to be short lived. And you can already see this is going to be a confusing time for a lot of people because they're going to want to. Uh, buy any dip construct and that's only going to get you so far because we're only going to at best move back up to the zero before turning around. If we don't even make it to the 23%, uh, that lets you know uh, where things are going to go. And that's just because of the depth of the DOC red right here. Uh, normally that is to come over roll and then create a higher loop. We've already created a lower shakeout to the previous. So from that standpoint, um, strength, no. Doesn't mean you're not going to see rallies because always within a short loop there are going to be punches. But um, overall, there's still so many headwinds. But uh, it, it becomes an opportunity where you have too many people positioned one side. You can see we're relatively symbiotic between the Nasdaq and the S and P. The difference is just the uh, valuation level. Uh, the Nasdaq only retraced to the primary breakout at the end of May, which was this positive extreme uh, that came down right here. We haven't reached the previous one where the S&P has already achieved back to that um, pre-April move. So you can see there's a considerable difference in strength. And of course, you know, your big seven or big eight, depending on what you want to determine from the NASDAQ, have really been the primary drivers of that. But should they start to see any additional erosion, um, the market will move quickly to the negative side because they represent a huge uh, percentage value of the S&P as well as uh, within the NASDAQ. And uh, they've outperformed all the others, uh, just in a clear relative stance. From a treasury standpoint, we're still outside the Fed range, which means the, you know, and people don't often get the meaning of how significant that is because it basically says that the market is expecting things that the Fed isn't and um, that elevated uh, interest rate that the market is charging is certainly going to impact uh, treasuries and everything else uh, going forward. And so, you know, it's been an easy call for our viewpoint uh, and the fact that we've accelerated into this with this continued extreme negativity. Uh, just means that there's a lot more bond pain and it makes it uh, difficult because it's attractive for a lot of people uh, to want to jump into those higher rates rather than being in uh, the risk aspects of the market because of the uh, change from an oil standpoint nice to climb that helps a lot but it's not a whole significant move uh, because again one small thing and this is right back up all we're getting from this was a refill of the positive extremes coming back through and now you've created a nice little baseline and uh, it's not going to take much we're already seeing the beginning turn around from a uh, super negative doc green here uh red still declining so we're still caught in that range where we're going to continue with this so we're still within the down stretch of it but um it won't take much of a move uh, from the DOC, uh, orange in that to spike up and that would create some negativity. The Euro again, uh, reporting negative growth throughout most of its uh, EU countries and or uh, at best zero. And that's in relatively decent times. Uh, can you imagine if things get any uglier, um, real problematic. And it's, it's definitely gonna be difficult for the central banks to keep this one uh, in line, uh, particularly if that starts to accelerate. And um, particularly if you see oil rise and or US interest rates, because again, it, what, what's the ECB gonna do? They're gonna raise rates now into declining almost zero growth pretty hard uh, to convince people that that's a good idea, but uh, they may be forced to just to keep the euro from uh, imploding uh, significantly because the disparity between the two is dramatic. Um, There's also gold uh, still uh, hasn't even reached what it should be starting from an acceleration standpoint. All we are is back to um, where we were from the midpoint after this uh, brief decline when things appeared more rosy than they actually were. Um, and of course, so, you know, you still have that unknown element of the Middle East and any of that escalation, though it's been 
pretty well contained, but it, it's only going to take one incident for that to blow out and uh, become problematic. And that's been the drive to Bitcoin, and that's still uh, relatively positive, even though it's in a slight uh, easing point. Um, as long as the DOC steel, when it remains below that negative 13, but as soon as it moves back above the negative 13, that will be the next uh, push forward. So it's just in a collection phase, absorbing the move that's already taken place. And similar from an ETH standpoint, I would say it's just slightly uh, weaker, um, not just relatively, but uh, actually from its move standpoint, Bitcoin was much stronger. And we can see from the 50K standpoint, Literally, we're just moving back up towards the breakdown of the lows that took place back over here around the 25th range of October. So starting off uh, not in a horrible condition, there's no positive extreme fill that needs to take place from that standpoint, except for we do have the positive extreme that was back here at the 41.54, and that would be your uh, downside pull uh, if uh, selling starts to accelerate. Um, not horrible from this reading, from the standpoint of the magentas uh, moving back up. We're seeing uh, a separation between shorts and uh, the long side right there, and that would be enough to lift it. And you combine it with the fact that uh, uh, short-term buyers in the steel popping up and you've got the declining uh, orange. Uh, it's just going to be a question of when those two meet, how much of a push you get. And if they're not able to accelerate enough, well, that becomes uh, where you start to see uh, scared hands run. From a current right now, this is what we saw from the pre-market, so quite a dip. Uh, it's getting a bounce off of it right now uh, as we uh, begin to move towards the pre-market. We can see from yesterday, uh, it was pretty clean. Uh, let me start the slide over a little further there for you. So in the pre-market, we had the dip, and then as soon as the cash opened, there was just a little shaking back and forth, and then it solidified, and that caused the stair-step rise to what was a fairly decent rise within uh, the overall setup, and that just got filled all the way back in. And again, that's uh, kind of typical of what we see, and that, that's pretty normal from a overall standpoint of that uh, fade-off going back through uh, after you get a punch, they go ahead and clear any people who decided to go long and thought they could just set stops and be clear of things. And yeah, it becomes problematic from that viewpoint. But when we look at it back from this daily standpoint, you can see that you know we're still back at this April range. But again, there's that potential for this move down to that uh, 3984 range. And that is a darker side scenario. And Literally, what we'd be watching for is the meeting of this DOC uh, cyan to green. You get any move back up of the cyan from that, uh, particularly with uh, steel. So far in the advance, there's not a whole lot of room for that. So this is going to have to be carried by your longer term, midterm. Now, of course, by the beginning of next week, you've got new fund money coming in. That could be enough to stabilize things. The question really is going to become, does it seek safety in treasuries versus going into uh, the, the market? And um, really, that, I think, is going to be the test of things because uh, any negative reports coming through from an economic standpoint certainly going to drive people in that direction. So this is what we'll be looking for. And... Uh, be able to play it accordingly because as long as you see no reset of the um, steel either dipping back below the red um, you're going to get some brief movements where it crosses over of steel but um, overall the critical one is going to be this meat of the uh, midterm buyers in green and cyan and that's going to reflect it we'll know that one in a couple of days but uh, that will reflect whether or not we can really put a strong expectation for this uh, 3984 fill. And uh, I don't think it's uh, out of the reach. So we'll keep an eye on it. But as always, uh, we're ready to go with this. Everything is uh, pretty much moving clean to what the readings are. And we'll just continue to follow that. As always, though, trade well. We'll talk to you later.